Do you remember when Ubisoft games were good? Do you remember when Ubisoft games were creative, innovative, worth playing? <laughs> Me neither. Now I'm kidding, that was a joke. But I have two announcements to make. Firstly, I'm bald, I know, I know, shocking, scary, maybe a little bit Andrew Tate, but hey. Rip me out the plastic because I'm feeling brand new. New enough to say that too, Ubisoft is the worst gaming company to ever exist. Why? Well, buckle up because here goes any opportunity to get sponsored by Ubisoft. Ubisoft don't make games, they make churned out nonsense and bad financial decisions like Hyperscape, a game that no one asked for, made Ubisoft no money and existed for a whole 20 minutes. Who's gonna tell them that they could have just slapped a BR mode into the Division 2? Ah, see? They're learning. Remember Rayman? Well, bro's been trapped on the iPads of six-year-olds for almost a decade. Rayman Fiesta Run, Adventures, Mini, iOS, Android, bah, f you. All we want is Rayman 4. Murphy promised. But nah, let's make another Assassin's Creed game. Let's copy this guy's homework, but don't make it too obvious. Let's strip away everything people liked about the games. Let's cheat on our wives and then apologize with this shit. A literal mirage of a good game. You, you see what you see what I did there? You, you, you know, Mirage. Think fast, chuckle nut. To those currently typing, you're pathetic. Why are you so mad? You sound like an Ubisoft hater. Yes, I hate Ubisoft. <laughs> you have the mind of a true scholar. Ubisoft could have disappeared yesterday, and I wouldn't care. No one would care. No one would miss their shallow, generic games. Tuesday's grocery list is more inspired. They are quite literally a company that cares more about quotas, deadlines, and money over quality. Not to mention back in 2020, 25% of Ubisoft employees stated that they had seen or experienced workplace misconduct. Three years later, layoffs with no notice, execs are being arrested for sexual <coughs> crunch still exists, and how could I forget CEO Yves Guillemot's infamous motivational email, blaming his staff for Ubisoft's poor financial performance, asking for them to deliver games at a higher level of quality, stating in the email that the ball is in their court. First of all, nigga, grow, <laughs> okay? Secondly, it's your ball. Thirdly, subscribe. A company run by pathetic people will produce pathetic games, Yves. Simple. And when a foundation is weak, everything built upon it will eventually crumble. Let's face it, a place where staff are overworked and sexual harassment is all over the place isn't just morally bankrupt, it's a breeding ground for toxicity and despair. Well, who cares? Just, just play the games! Yeah, who cares about workplace abuse? Who cares about the people who slave away, day and night, working hard to create some of your favorite... whatever this is? Who cares if you trap a woman in an elevator and proceed to... Uh, that ain't Riz, my boy. That... That, that, that's right. Meetings at Ubisoft probably aren't about inspiring creativity. It's about sitting in a room or a Zoom call and hearing that you and your team need X game out by X date. Pressure is bad for creativity. It's rarely fruitful and reflects in the art an individual or team of people make. Ubisoft doesn't care though. They do not care if a game isn't up to standard. Heck, this is the same company that quite literally used to lie about how their games looked and played. They don't care and they know you'll keep buying and this is why ubisoft games aren't good and never will be ubisoft stopped being ubi and just got soft real soft i could wipe my ass with them they've forgotten what it means to create art to create worthwhile experiences and instead pump out video games of all the heart and soul of an assembly line remember when far cry wasn't a far cry from quality Remember when Ubisoft games were more than just a product? A testament to the creativity and dedication of those who crafted them? Your IPs are beloved and shouldn't be treated as commodities lacking depth, soul, and magic. All the things that make a gaming experience memorable. It can't be all doom and gloom though, right? I mean, if we look past the fact that Ubisoft worships the demon of greed, putting microtransactions in single player games of pride, their refusal to innovate, and of course, how could we forget Sorry, Ubisoft Connect. Violating PC players since 2009. But come on, we love climbing towers, right? We love bare bones sports games. We love dancing, cause gamers can dance. 
We love playing the same games every single year with the same gameplay loops, formulas and controls, right? Am I insane? Am I seeing things? Because it seems to me that Ubisoft is quite literally holding a magic hat full of some of the best IPs, but insists on pulling out the same two titles. They make money, sure, but that alone doesn't excuse that the titles we long for remain dead, buried and lost. No, not, not, not that lost. Splinter Cell's dead. Driver's dead. Beyond Good and Evil, seemingly held at gunpoint. After redeeming themselves with a great sequel, Watch Dogs Legion made sure to kill what could have been one of Ubisoft's most lucrative IPs. Ghost Recon, quality-wise, is dead. Raymond's dead. Goodness, he killed them all. Someone get this man featured in a JCS video. Psst, real talk though, just give me another Raymond game and we'll be square Ubisoft. I'll, I'll delete this whole video. But until then, I'ma keep spinning the block, nigga, on phone him. <laughs> you wanna know what really makes me laugh, though? The fact that Ubisoft actually tried their hand at NFTs. I swear someone running this company is snorting crack and crystal. I mean, seriously, NFTs? Ubisoft, the company that can't even make a game worth playing, thinks they can delve into the world of blockchain technology? Ah, it's, it's like watching a toddler try and pilot a spaceship. Oh, oh, wait. A toddler is actually trying to pilot a spaceship. But wait, there's more. Ever had an issue with an Ubisoft game? Good luck and Godspeed. Try shouting into the void with the hopes that someone might hear you. You have a better chance of seeing the second coming of Christ, amen, before you'll ever hear back from Ubisoft. They'll gladly take your money, but when it comes to addressing your problems, and no, I'll not be inserting a black father joke, but I will be calling into question the fans. You know what? I'm about to say it. You are all clowns. You belong in a dorm full of privileged frat boys because you are being exploited and you're letting it happen. The mental gymnastics required to convince yourselves that Ubisoft is still a good company that makes good games. It must be exhausting. Imagine for a second defending a company that clearly doesn't care about you. Ubisoft is laughing all the way to the bank knowing they can slap together any half-baked game and you'll eat it up like it's a gourmet meal. However, no Michelin stars are attached to Assassin's Creed or Far Cry anymore. It's all rotten. Yet you keep waiting for another meal, one with promise of innovation. Yet time and time again, all you receive from Ubisoft is mediocrity. It's as if you've fallen in love with your own disappointment. You'd think the company has a PhD in gaslighting. They release games riddled with bugs, cut content and microtransactions, yet somehow they convince you it's your fault for not enjoying the experience. They make you question your own standards. They make you defend them as if they're family. But let me remind you, they're not. They're a corporation with one goal in mind. Profit. Whoa, 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 but, but hold up. Let's give credit where it's due. Ubisoft are exceptional at crafting intricate, immersive worlds. Whether it's meticulously recreating historical settings, capturing the bustling essence of Chicago's windy city, or bringing to life the vibrant spirit of San Francisco, a world so intricately detailed that, fun fact, actually helped me navigate the real San Fran during my visit years ago. And then there are the hauntingly ruined streets of Washington DC or the fantastical utopia we get to explore in Immortals Phoenix Rising. It's impressive how even under the constraints of corporate's evil eye that insist that these games be sold to us in shackles, these worlds still manage to shine, defying the limitations imposed upon them. But what if there were no limitations at all? What if instead of being bound by corporate greed, these talented developers were free to let their creativity soar? Imagine the games they could create, the worlds they could build, and the experiences they could offer. Ubisoft, it's not too late to change, to break free of the shackles of mediocrity, and to embrace the boundless potential of the creative minds you've employed. Gamers are yearning for innovation, for stories that captivate their souls and gameplay that challenges their minds. But change requires courage, a willingness to acknowledge past mistakes, and a commitment to fostering a workplace culture built on respect, creativity, and equality. It demands a shift in priorities from profits at any cost to quality and player satisfaction. And in a world where the gaming industry is evolving at breakneck speed, those who dare to be different and invest in genuine creativity and play experience will stand the test of time. Ubisoft, you have the talent, the resources, and the opportunity to redefine what it means to be a gaming company. So the ball is in your court, Eve. 
Will you continue down the road of mediocrity, or will you rise above the constraints and take advantage of the endless possibilities that await you within your own company? <sighs> Give us Raymond four, and I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Whoa, whoa.